I worked on the Lafouche Comet for a while, then I went to UPI, and I really enjoyed my work with UPI. That Ken Englade recently returned home, if only for a few days, back to the school where he learned his trade of writing and reporting news. He originally wanted to learn architecture when he was at LSU in the late 50s. But Englade, who was raised in New Orleans, was looking for a little more excitement. And that's exactly what he got. Saigon, 1975, when the U.S. Embassy was besieged by Vietnamese and Americans trying to escape the country. In fact, Operation Frequent Wind, as it was termed, occurred 35 years ago this month. Ken Englade was a war correspondent for United Press International. He arrived in 1972 and was one of the last two U.S. reporters to leave the country before it was occupied by the North Vietnamese Army. And there was a mob around the embassy because the U.S. had said, we're going to get everybody out. And of course they couldn't. And the people were pretty ticked off about that. And there was a little rioting. But it had calmed down by the time we got to the embassy. So we met in Bangkok and probably drank a drink or two. And Joe Galloway also served as a war correspondent for UPI in Vietnam. Vietnam was the most openly reported war in the history of our country. And... Uh, you didn't have many rules. Englade actually loved Asia. After assignments in Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia, he found himself not wanting to leave. But I just fell in love with the place. I liked the weather, I liked the people, I liked the culture. I just felt really at home there. Nevertheless, when UPI began powering down its Asia staffers after the war ended, Englade was reassigned to Dallas. That was the first step in a new career. His first career, that of a reporter, began back in 1960, after graduating from LSU's journalism school. His first job was working for the Lafouche Comet. A short while later, he was hired by UPI to join its two-man staff in Baton Rouge. Then on to New Orleans, where he covered everything from civil rights demonstrations to the arrival of Sugar Bowl fans. Most people tried to get to Washington and New York. That's where the action was supposed to be. But we had enough action in New Orleans at the time. I remember another time when he was calling a story in for the radio network and the editor of the network uh, had to call him and order him to get off the phone. He wouldn't hang up. He just wanted to see the story through. That was typically Ken. After New Orleans, he worked for a short time as manager of a one-man bureau in Edinburgh, Texas, before being reassigned to Albuquerque as state manager and regional director for West Texas and New Mexico. The angle has landed. It was about this time when he traveled to Houston to cover the Apollo missions, including the historic moon landing in 1969. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. And when Armstrong landed on the moon, I was taking a transmission, and my good friend Don Davis was at the same time. And we looked at each other and we said, what the hell did he say? And we never could get it straight, and I know the tapes didn't, didn't never made it clear either. But it was, it was really kind of funny, because this was the most important thing in history up to that point, as far as we were concerned. And we said, huh? Inglade also worked in New York before leaving for Vietnam. By the time he left the UPI, he had 14 years as a reporter, manager, and war correspondent. Post-UPI, he freelanced in Southern Africa before changing his career from news reporting to writing magazine articles. He wrote dozens of articles for U.S. publications, as well as a number of publications in Canada, Japan, and Southern Africa. And then Englade would segue from magazines to books. In the late 80s, Englade wrote his first book called Cellar of Hara, a true crime story about a Philadelphia man who tortured women in his basement. That book would be the first of 15 books Englade would write. I can't imagine uh, a newsman finding the time to do that. I worked fast. I got my training through UPI. Uh, UPI's motto was a deadline every minute. Most books were of the true crime genre, but in the late 90s he began writing historical novels based on pre-Civil War days in the Plain States. So I had to do a lot of research on the Army and the various tribes who inhabited that area at the time. And that was fun. I, I like doing research anyway. In 2000, Inglade tried a third career, that of public information officer for the U.S. Missile Defense Agency. He retired in 2006, and today, he and his wife Heidi reside in Rio Rancho, just outside of Albuquerque. Now that his three children are grown, he's once again picked up the camera, 
just this go around, his subject matter is, well, not so serious. It's named Old Guy Pet Photography. When I was with UPI, especially in Vietnam, we always carried a camera with us. And the camera came in pretty handy. You know, I got some nice shots. I had some pictures published in Time and Newsweek. He saw the world. He worked in four different continents. You had to go out into the field with soldiers and share the dangers with them to get the story. And uh, there was no other shortcuts. And uh, nobody cared, you know, whether you were in the picture or not. Uh, you just had to do your job. And uh, Ken Englade did his job. And he did it damn well. Ken Enblade, a 2010 LSU Journalism School Hall of Fame inductee.